Hi, everybody. Will here with this week's interview chair. In the chair this week is my very dear friend, Mr. David Geniak. So I'm sure you'll enjoy this. Hi, everybody. Will here. Uh, today on the interview chair, we have my buddy, David Geniak. How are you, David? I'm very well. Did I say your name right? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to. Like, Gignac. Gignac. No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I've been taught that years ago. It's okay. <laughs> so you guys are good out there on the West Coast? We are. It must be really sunny because look at you. I look how white and pale I look and look how tanned you are. <laughs> I work hard at it. And I'm still in a turtleneck, for Christ's sake. We, <laughs> we have a storm here. Like, it's been snowing on and off, and it's freezing. Well, I just came back from Camrose, and it was freezing there, too, so. Okay, how'd you do? Very well. Yeah. Very yeah. well, yeah. Very good. Good Good to hear. All right, let us begin. Um, the very first question, David, is I want to know how you got started in our sport of dogs and how old you were when you started in the sport of dogs. Well, it was 1967, and I was, I believe I was nine. I might have been eight, but I think I was nine. <laughs> Two. Thanks, Will. <laughs> Anyways, our, my father had worked for a beagle kennel when he was young, and he always wanted to get a dog. My mother was terrified of dogs, absolutely, just terrified. And I remember it came down to a choice between a miniature schnauzer and a basset hound. Oh. So off we all went to the Canadian Save the Children's Fund at some college in Ottawa. As a and, dog show. Right? The dog show. Walking around looking for miniature schnauzers and basset hounds. And my mother stopped dead in her track. She heard this noise. And she couldn't figure out what the noise was. Anyway, she turned around. She saw this woman grooming this small white dog. And she had this charm bracelet on her wrist that had probably a hundred charms on it. So at, with every motion of brushing, it just made this incredibly loud noise. And my mother just looked at the dog and that was there, that. There you go. That was it. Right, <laughs> when she became. Besties became our life. <laughs> Who was the lady with the charm bracelet? Mrs. Daniel Jenkins. Yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, probably, I think about a year later, we got our first one. Two years later, we got our second one. Both from Mrs. DJ, and off we went. <laughs> so key, that, that's not the end, though, David. We have to know all this stuff. Not getting off that easy. <laughs> so your first dog show. And First see, dog you, show you, I recall was a was a sanction match in Brockville, and the judge was Bob Boxma. Oh wow, Bob yeah. Boxma! Yeah. And um, I think we got a rosette. I don't know. I don't know what it was for, but we got a rosette. And at that time, I was in our family. I was third in line of the children. So my older brother got to show the dog. My older sister got to show the dog. And by the time the dog got to me, it was so exhausted. Like there was there was no showing it. So yeah. I had to be patient and wait my turn until we got another dog, and then I could get to go in. And the first the first juniors I went in was under Hilda Pugh. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first juniors. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I think I won. I, had, I think I wore a dentist shirt too. <laughs> High collar, zipped up in the back. Yeah, I think it was a dentist. Shirt. Morley mustn't have been there with a Scotty then. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so you you did you start showing the family's dogs then? Did you they, did people realize you had? Did your parents realize you had a knack for it? Um. Yeah. And at, back then, it was, you know, I mean, uh, people didn't have a lot of money. And uh, so each year, 
um, they would pick one of us and we would get a special trip. So I remember my sister got to go to Westminster um, and I think she showed our first dog and got reserve winners, which to us, that was like... Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> huge. Um, I forget where my brother went. I got to go to the uh, International Kennel Club of Chicago mm -hmm. in 1972 and I showed a brace of our first two Westies and went best brace in show under Johnny Murphy. I think I've who, seen that picture. Who is Desi's uncle? Yeah. Uncle, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And they also had they also had a junior dog judging contest for 4-H kids, which I entered and I won that too. <laughs> Were you a 4-H kid or you just you know, no, 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 no. So you no. stole that Ottawa, Ottawa Junior <laughs> Kennel Club. <laughs> Oh, wow. Ottawa Junior Kennel Club. Yeah, I, I I attended that. I wasn't a member, but I used to show at the Ottawa Juniors. Mm -hmm. That was sort of like our finals back then. So, sort of for us, as I'm much older than you, our finals was always at Scarborough Kennel Club. Oh yeah, and mine were Scarborough as well. But I remember that yeah. it'd be a big deal to show us shows. We right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The juniors. Yeah. 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 But ours, ours was Scarborough Kennel Club, and the overall prize was a watch. Yeah, I won the watch. I no, to, which to us was huge. We oh, thought, yeah. like, wow, <laughs> Luke. Was, and now I'm confused. I because one year I won, and one year Luke won. And Luke, did Luke get a watch, or did I get the watch, and he got a bike? I think I got the bike, and he got the watch. <laughs> we always we always argue about that. Well, at least I got a watch. Your bike is long gone. Right? <laughs> my, my younger sister won it under Lorna Jackson. Oh, one wow. year, yeah, <laughs> and I won it under John McNichol. One year, oh, John McNichol, yeah, yeah, my favorites growing up, John, yeah, yeah. So we each got a watch, we were happy. So you competed, <laughs> in, you competed in juniors, oh, yeah, yeah, and then what happened after juniors? Um, well, we lived in Ottawa at the time, um, and we moved out to British Columbia. My father was transferred with his job in the government uh, in 1979. In 1979. And I, I showed a few dogs for other people. Um, and I think everybody always asked. I worked for every handler I could possibly work for. Like when I lived even in Ontario. Who was your first one? The first one was Malcolm Fellows. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Malcolm Fellows, and the first do the first dog that I actually showed, even before a Westie, was a Beagle. Uh, oh, that was one of his. Her name was Sarah. Anyways, um, Malcolm is actually the judge that gave me best junior handler at the Ottawa Finals. Ottawa thing I showed. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah, he was a nice guy. He was a nice guy. And then I didn't see him for years and years and years. And, and of course, I got to know him through Mrs. Daniel Jenkins because he showed her daughter's Westie um, at the time. Yeah. And for people um, who don't know, Malcolm Fellows won Best in Show in 1975 or 74? Uh, five, I want to say. I want to say five, too. At yeah. Westminster with Sir Lancelot of Bar Van Old yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah. Little sidekick there, sorry, David. <laughs> and then I then I worked um, for a while for Luke Wellow. Oh, and anybody that would take me on. <laughs> um, back then, Gary and Elaine, um, Brian and Judy, like Carol Hollins, Martha Covington Thorne, you name it. Like, oh wow, yeah, yeah. How was it working for and, Luke? Garrett? Garrett, Garrett was the one from the East that I stayed with the longest. Yeah. 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 He was an amazing man. Oh, for sure he was. Yeah. And then I spent one summer with Peter Green in the States. Um, who else did I remember? Mark George, I spent a summer with. Yeah. And then in, the, in, in BC, did you work for Susan? I did. When I came to BC, I, I worked for, uh, Taffy was her main assistant, and then I worked um, underneath Taff for a number of years with yeah. Uh, Susan, yeah. 
Yeah, that was a great experience. Oh, I'm sure. What a lineup that was with you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, tell us what it was like working for, for Susan. And it was Susan Hillman, everybody, if you don't know who Susan Hillman is. She was the lady of our dog shows in Canada for sure. So. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I like to um, describe her as I was in I was in uh, Bermuda one time and Mrs. Clark was there and they asked her, someone asked her who Susan Hillman was. And she said, if you took me and bred me to Janie, you'd get Susan Hillman. So- <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Susan was amazing. You know, she just had she just had a way with dogs, um, and everybody everybody would always say, "Oh, you know, Susan." The butter would not melt in her mouth, and I thought, "But just wait till after eleven o'clock at night in the trailer," <laughs> and it would. <laughs> but she was great. She yeah. was absolutely yeah. She was phenomenal. Yeah. How long were you with Susan? Oh, I want to say maybe five or six years. Yeah. If my failing memory serves me right, I think about five or six years. So she was your longest one. She was the longest person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, before we carry on, I want to ask you, uh, up to that point, who would have been your main mentors in the sport? Who would have guided you at that point? I have to say, um, when we first got in dogs, one of the first people that our family did meet was Jim Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, he he always would tell us stories. And, um, of course, through him, then got to know, like, Betty Hisla, you know, and hung around at dog shows with Tom Bradley and, like, you know, Celeste Hutton, Betty, one of Betty's dear friends that had wolfhounds. Uh, I mean, it was an amazing learning experience, oh, I'm you sure. know, and you just, you just like sat back, kept your mouth shut and just took it all in. Like, it was amazing. It, I'm so glad I grew up when I did in dogs. For sure. Really. You know, because there were just so many amazing people. I mean, there's amazing people now. Absolutely. But it, it was an amazing time. Absolutely. I agree. It was, it was a different time. And it was, it was, they, to me, they were all on such a pedestal that it was. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Them, so. Yeah, absolutely. Like you just, yeah, like I say, you know what, shut up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't open your mouth. <laughs> uh, one year, uh, well, later on, but I mean, one year I remember in Montreal, I went to a show and uh, United Kennel Club and uh, Frank Sabella was on the panel. And Harold Butler had um, some people over for dinner. And there was um, there was Harold, there was Sue Rempel, uh, Linda Torrance. Um, I was there, Ed Gravely and his wife, Lise. And then Bill Taylor and Frank Sabella. And the rest of us just sat back and let those two just go at it. And I mean, oh, it, was, it was amazing. It was, yeah, I'll never forget that night. It was like, just sit back, shut up, and listen. <laughs> so you were with Susan for about five years, you think. How old were you when you left Susan? Oh, I would have been in my later 20s, I think. Yeah. Which is unheard of like- now, you know, for an apprentice to just be that long with a handler, you know. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think how I kind of... You know, I went off into my showing on my own. Um, and I think everybody always says, well, where did you learn to groom? Where did you know? And I think in my own breed, Westies, um, I watched my father and every night before or a night before a dog show, he'd throw the dog up on the table. He wouldn't touch it all week long. <laughs> right. And then for four hours, rip hair out of it and then wonder why it didn't want to show the next day in the ring, right? And I thought, I think there's got to be a better way. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of, I, not to sound egotistical or anything, but I think I was sort of self-taught. Yeah. You know, I just picked it up on my own. I mean, yes, I learned things from Peter, but I mean, Westies were not his favorite thing. <laughs> you know, he was more into the longer-legged terriers, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, he's a genius at everything, but. Um, I just, I think I was kind of basically. 
Yeah, 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 I can see that because I was sort of the same way, but I think I stole things from different people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, life. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Like, I, you know, pick up things from Mark, from Peter, from Birgit, you know, and just just watching. You know, yeah. that's, I think that's missing a lot today. I don't think there's enough watching. Oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like everybody, it's our instant society, right? Well, Adam used to annoy me trying to watch me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were on your own now. Explain, explain that to me. When did when did you and Pat meet? Oh, Pat and I met. I want to say it was almost as soon as I moved to BC. Okay. I just, you know, I yeah, because because she also she was a friend of Susan's and Taffy's, and um, you know she would travel to some shows with them. Um, and I used to think, God, that girl's funny. And uh, <laughs> anyway. She still is. <laughs> right? One thing led to another. <laughs> and here we are 34 years later. Wow. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, it was, it was you know, through the dog shows and, and basically probably Susan and Tappy, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you went on your own, was was Pat part of the equation at that point? Like, were you a team? Not, not initially, not initially, because um, we weren't, like, together you know, when I went out on my own. And one of the first dogs when I did go out on my own was um, Tom and June Fraser were campaigning Whitebriar Geronimo, who... For me, at the time, and still, this is one of the all-time greats in the breed. I mean, stunning dog. Um, anyways, Tom had to work, um, and he couldn't get to a show, and they asked me if I would show the dog, and of course I was, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I did, and I think the first time I showed him, I think I even lost the breed. I was <laughs> devastated, and I remember Tommy saying, well, let us let us know how much we owe you, and I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> I said I, I didn't win. <laughs> I don't think like that anymore. No. <laughs> At the time, and it was Geronimo. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just more and more people just started coming to me, and and um, our one of our first clients was actually a toy poodle. Which um, is the first, uh, like besides Geronimo, because obviously he sticks out in your mind because of his presence in the breed or his magnitude in the breed. Who is the first primary dog you got when you started to do some winning with? Um, that would be a dog that was bred and owned by Linda Carmichael. Um, his name was uh, Windaker Man for All Seasons. And he was a Geronimo's son. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He gave me my first, he gave me my first win on the Montgomery County weekend. Um, he was a lovely dog. He was a lot of dog. He went. He ended up going over to Finland, I believe, for a while, helped the breed out there, and and then came back. But yeah, no, he was he was probably my first big winner. Yeah, yeah. He had a number of best in shows, and like I say, he was like he was reserve at Montgomery, and he was like best of winners at Atboro and Devon, and yeah, maybe your first taste, that's for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was next? What was next? What was next on the agenda on the David Jignac list? I wanna, uh, my next big winner would have been a dog that um, was owned by Madeline Cronby, and his name was Cloudcroft's Mulberry Punch. Okay. And we used to call him Rogue. Yeah, I remember that dog very well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Well. Was he top terrier? Uh, he was top terrier one year, and I think number six all breeds. I think that, yeah, he was my first launching into like the top 10 yeah i remember yeah, yeah he was sure. a beautiful dog he was a beautiful dog madeline just lived down the road from me i remember that she did yes yeah 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 he was a good dog he was a good dog was your next dog her bitch then or was that was there something um that she would have followed uh mulberry's miss merriweather merriweather yeah, that would have, and she was the one that led to my Michelle Billings poster <laughs> <laughs> and cassette. <laughs> you want to tell a story? You you tell that story. Tell that story. <laughs> I mean, it's just I campaigned Meriwether, and she ended up top carrier. And Michelle Billings had given her, I think she well definitely one, but I think she gave her two best shows that year. 
anyways, we went to the top dog dinner and um, I just thought I was going to go up and, you know, <laughs> give my little thank you very much and, <laughs> you know, accept the ribbon and, and that. And then William here had I was arranged, <laughs> arranged with Michelle Billings to have a, a, a recorded message uh, to me and Mary Weather, <laughs> and a life-size cardboard <laughs> cutout. I'm surprised she's not there with you right I now. I should have her here with me. <laughs> I should have her here with me. I still have her. She sits downstairs beside my trimming mirror. <laughs> Dust her off once a week. <laughs> <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun, and I was, like, so shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have... I would have been Miss be Merriweather, yeah. <laughs> you thought it was just being me up there talking to you. You got Michelle Billings, though. Recording, <laughs> right. I, recorded I remember calling right. her and I said, I'm, I'm going to record this. <laughs> Can you do a, you know, a thing or an awards presentation for David and Merriweather? <laughs> of course I can, William. <laughs> oh, it, it was great. Even, I even carried her through uh, security at the airport. <laughs> 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 and it was life size. Actually, it's bigger than life size. Her head is bigger than our head, doesn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> it was good. And who is next after Mary Weather? Oh. When did the carry come along? What year was that? Oh, the carry. Oh, the carry blue dog, uh, Valley Moon's Flint Tango. He was, what was the year of the CKC Centennial? Was it 87 or 88? 88? 89. Maybe 89. Mm. Yeah, I honestly can't remember. Yeah, I I just, <laughs> the, the video of Best in Show has been showing up on, on Facebook lately. I, and, uh, it's, I don't like to see that. <laughs> yeah, you and your little tuxedo. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hang on. Oh, there she is. <laughs> 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 yeah, her, head, her head's bigger than our heads, but <laughs> you know, she, she, she was bigger than life anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Patricia? It was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the the centennial. Okay, yeah. So that was so that would have been yeah that would have been the year of um. Well, maybe he was he was my first top carrier. That's oh, well, right. He was, that's why yeah. I, you know what? I thought that. So yeah, he was he was the first dog that, that I was top terrier with. Yeah. 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 yeah it, great big open side gate. I think he was kind of ahead of his time in that area. I don't think at that time, I don't think people really focused in on that. You know, showmanship back then was not given the emphasis that it is today. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's almost too much today, but. <laughs> I, but I vaguely remember when he was a he was a striking dog going around the ring. There's no question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. But he was your first top terrier then. Yeah, he was my first top terrier, and then uh, R Rogi would have been after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Ro Rogi was the early '90s. I think he was '92. Yeah, exactly. Because he was '92. Because yeah, it was either the Centennial was either '89 or '90. I can't quite remember. So. Yeah. So after Meriwether, then what what came along then? Well, oh. first of all, when did you and when did you and Pat get married? We didn't we skip so we skip right over that years ago. <laughs> Pat, Pat just said a hundred years ago. You're being prompted now. <laughs> <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> this year, this year will be our thirty fourth wedding anniversary. Oh wow! In June, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, I've, had, I've had a few of those. I'm just <laughs> in that. that <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. So, okay, what was after Meriwether? I'm sorry, we got off track. Oh, I should have. I should have wrote this all down before. <laughs> I know this. And this is good. This is like we're digging up. You made me answer questions. My, my failing memory. <laughs> after Meriwether, um, oh gosh, there was. I think there was a sort of a period of of several that did well mm -hmm. but not you know not top terrier yeah, yeah yeah they did well they were like multiple best of show dogs and i think they placed in the top 10 terriers but you know um nobody that really 
really caught on, I, I don't think. No. Well, then who was the next big one? Um, I'm on the blank you know here. where I'm trying to steer you. I'm just waiting for you to answer it. <laughs> I, well, I, no, I know. I'm, see, I'm just, uh, I'm jumping ahead in my mind. I'm jumping ahead to JD, right? Right. <laughs> I want to know the story of JD, how that, that well, and, uh, okay. But I was, there was, there was I had a beautiful, <laughs> I had a beautiful bitch called Rose. Yeah, I remember Rose. Yeah, she, I think, I don't think she was top cherry, though. I think she ended up number two. Um, had a beautiful bitch named Zoom, uh, who was all, they, they were before JD. Um, JD came along in. Explain who JD is for everybody, in case they don't know. Oh, if uh, he oh. is New Zealand, American, Canadian Grand Champion, White Briar Jaw Dropper. So isn't it incredible that you started off with the White Briar Dog, and that was just really your life, and then your next really big winner was the White Briar Dog. Yeah. Right, and Maureen Murphy of White Briar to me yeah. is like the queen of everything Westie. I oh, mean, me too. I just love Maureen. She. I just have so much respect for her. She is so smart, um, you know, because she she worked for the original White Briar in England. And then when Mrs. Beer passed away, Maureen, the government told her she had to return to New Zealand. And so she scooped up White Briar dogs, left for New Zealand. And as they became older and weren't in the breeding program anymore, she would go around the world and bring dogs in from all over, and yet she never faltered from that white briar type, mm -hmm. which to me is genius. You know, I mean, I have so much respect, right? That's an amazing story. I think. It is. I just like, that's, very, you know, like they're not, um, like JD did not have a white briar sire or a white briar dam. Um, still carried the white briar name because Maureen, um, bred him, right? um, but she's just so clever to combine all these dogs and yet maintain that, which is my favorite type, <laughs> the yeah, white bread. Classic type. Classic type. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I had been, that 2012, I started off, and Westies are not always great show dogs. Um, you know, they're a bit stubborn. Um, I've been spoiled. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and I think I started that I year. Just, I don't think they think that it's your spoiled. I think it's because you're the Westie guy. You get this out of them. So I don't think it's that you're spoiled. <laughs> but 2012, I started off. And I think by the time I hit April, I'd gone through like three dogs. that <laughs> just <laughs> didn't want to do it. And um, I had spent time, oh, in... 2009 at our Westie Centennial in the States with Maureen and Vanessa Edwards, her um, JD's co-breeder and co-owner. Um, and they had been keeping me in the back of mind for a special dog, in the back of their minds for a special dog. And JD came along. Um, I, like I said, was having, trying to find a dog that was going to catch on. Um, and they sent me a picture of this dog and said, what do you think of this dog? And I'm like, when can it get here? <laughs> <laughs> I put it on the next plane. I mean, it was, the picture was stunning, like absolutely beautiful. Um, and so then, you know, the, the wheels were put in motion to try and get, get him over here. And so finally the time arrived, there was an issue with bees of all things. So it was his bees. Yeah, his coming over here was kept being delayed because of bees and the shipment of bees on New Zealand Air. Just like, oh, get this dog here. I need, I want this dog. And uh, anyways, so finally the day came. That JD arrived, and I thought I'm going to take one of our older bitches with us to the airport, right? Because he doesn't know us. Got a like a 15 hour flight. And I said, you know, the first thing he will see is another Westie. He'll be happy. So that worked out fine, right? He was glad to see her and everything and walked him around, put him in the car, drove home. And we were leaving right away, like within an hour to go to a show in the States. And uh, 
got home, I threw them in the backyard and packed up some stuff, looked in the backyard, and poor dog was sitting there in the middle of the backyard, tail down, shivering, like, and I said to Pat, uh-oh, maybe this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so anyways, I went out there and scooped him up, put him in the truck, and off we went to the dog show, and got to the dog show, set up the pens, put a couple of the other dogs out, put him out, he looked around, and boom, up went the tail, and never looked back. Yeah, I'm at a <laughs> never like that. Yeah, yeah, and he, had, he um, been, had he been obviously he'd been shown in New Zealand because he was a New Zealand yes. champion. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to. I don't want the end of the story to be never look back. I want to know the story. I want to know like let, let, let highlights of JD and because there was a million. So, oh yeah, he yeah. I mean, that was the ride of a lifetime. Um, the first day I showed him, he went group third. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I thought that wasn't the debut I had imagined, but <laughs> that's okay. Next day he went best in show. So, <laughs> you know, he, fin he finished, he finished with the best in show from the classes. And then he, uh, I mean, it's corny to say, but he never looked back. Yeah. You know, how many he did went, he end up with? How many best, how many best shows? Uh, he had 120 Canadian best in shows and one in the U.S., but he also had a couple of specialties that were pretty significant as well. He won. He won Great Western <laughs> twice. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to prod you along. <laughs> he he won the breed at Crufts, um and made the short list in the group. Um, uh, <laughs> he won. He won a bunch of specialties. Beat specialties in the state. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, he was. He was my dog of a life. Well, I know how important Great Western is to you, so I know that's a that was that was something. So yeah, and I mean, and at the time, I mean, he was you know there were some pretty competitive lineups. Yeah, I you remember know. the pictures. And you there was always you and Miss P in there, <laughs> right? You were always there with Miss P. Yeah, well, but he cool. ended. Yeah, he ended up uh, his first year. Uh, he won. 18 best in shows his first year and ended up number one terrier and I think number five all breeds and he was top dog. Um, and I, it wasn't, I shouldn't say it wasn't my goal because it actually, top dog was my goal. I, I just thought, no if this, <laughs> I thought if I can't do it with this dog, I'll never do it. Like he, you know, I just, I believed in him that much. And, yeah. um, we just we went at it, and he led right from the beginning. Yeah. No, he just. So how many best shows did he win that year? The year he was number one dog. Uh, seventy-five. Seventy-five. Wow. Seventy-five, and so then the next year, I thought, wow, he's like he's not even he's just three. Yeah. What you know, you but he was top dog, so it was like, do we go? Do we not? So then we decided, oh, let's just go to a hundred. <laughs> so and that and and that was a. A really fun weekend because it just happened that Maureen and Vanessa were over here visiting. They had planned a trip and they had taken the uh, Rocky Mountaineer train through the Rockies down into Vancouver. And then they went over to the island and that just happened to be the, the show that he got his um, 100th uh, under Mike Macbeth, mm -hmm. Terrier Woman. And uh, she also had given him a best in show before. For that, which broke the world best in show record for West. Oh, wow. Which was what? What was the world before JD? Uh, it was uh, Round Town, Ivan the Terror that George oh, Ward yeah, used George to show. Yeah. And he had 82 best in shows. Wow. And so Mike uh, broke the record in Lethbridge. And, um, and then she also gave him his uh, 100th. And Heidi Gervais had, she knew we were closing in on it, and she had a hundred red, white, and blue balloons in her truck <laughs> for like a couple of weeks, <laughs> waiting for him to break the... <laughs> uh, yeah. That's it was, great. An it was an amazing dog. Yeah, and you went on to... But, so yeah, he ended up with 120, so you weren't done. So Right, and then so once he hit 100, then we were like, oh... 
we really want to try for the the Canadian record of best in shows and and so we thought okay let's go for it oh yeah exactly <laughs> so and then everybody thought oh he's going to try and go for top dog again which was not never never was our our goal was not to go for top dog again but um I think he ended up number three that year but he wasn't showing full time so well right? he pretty much and and as soon as he broke the record. You know, yeah. boom, then that was that was it. And that was in Belleville under um Martin Doherty. Oh, yay, Martin. Yeah. 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 Wow. It was yeah. hard to put that kind of dog away though, wasn't it? Because you just you, you, you love showing them so much and you love seeing them in the ring so much that it's hard, even though you you know, you've accomplished everything you really need to accomplish, he doesn't have to prove it to anybody. Right. But it's hard. It's hard. I know what it's like. Uh, the feeling putting some some dog like that away is like, oh, I don't get to show you again. <laughs> right. And it's, it's like, now what? <laughs> oh, yeah. What yeah. comes after that? <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's hard. It's, somebody, always, somebody always said to me, oh, it might even have been you. I'm not sure. But I said, well, you know, the year after you go top dog, you got to be prepared. You got a lot of thirds. <laughs> yeah, you sprint for a fourth. Yep, that's what I've, I've always said that. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, oh, okay. And yeah, sure enough. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just yeah. seems like they're, they were tired of pointing at you at that point. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, he was a good dog. He was he yeah. was a good dog. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, the, he's the greatest winning dog in history right now, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. 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 So you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish, having the great Westie. Yes. Yeah. But you've had a great one since then, too. So it's I've been so blessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after. OK, so it's so difficult. Did you go right back with a Westie after J.D.? I can't remember. Yeah, well, because I always thought I thought, maybe I should try another breed, <laughs> you know, just yeah. for a while. Um. You know, we've had great success with each um, yeah. Bouvier's, you know, like a host of different breeds. Um, but, you know, it's what I know. Well, right? it's, so it's, I, it's what you're, you know, the, you're the, you're the Westie guy, so. Well, I don't know about that, but it's what I know. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, you are, David. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then along came, we had a dog from Germany, Blitz. Yeah, well, I remember. And, yeah, Blitz did really well. He had, like, I think 18 best in shows. And then um, after Blitz was, I think it was Mr. Bates. Oh. Who was a JD son. So was Blitz the first dog you showed for Lindy Barrel then? Um, Did she have something to do with Blitz? No, the first one that I campaigned for Lindy was a bit called Dinah. Oh, okay. Did she have something to do with Blitz or no? I thought she did. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, she owned Blitz over here in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so so you guys have had a, a a good relationship for quite a while now. So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We've known each other a long time. Yeah, um, and she actually got uh, she bought a bitch from us who was out of my rose who had done a lot of winning. Um, and her name was uh, Lindy's bitch's name was Kendra, and she was not her foundation bitch, but. One of her early ones that she, you know, started with the actual breeding and showing. She was a good bitch. She won. She won uh, sweeps at the American National, and you know, she did well. And she gave her a lot of good puppies. Well, it's interesting to think though that because your first West you did well with was Madeline's. Well, Madeline and Lindy used to somewhat chum together when I lived down the road. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they, they, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, Lindy and her mom got their first Westie from that. Yeah. That's interesting little, you know, sidebar. So uh, so you had Blitz, then what, what came after Blitz? Who came after um, Blitz? Sorry. Would have been Mr. Bates. Yeah. And he ended up top terrier. Blitz ended up number two terrier, I believe. Um, he liked to do it himself, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes. They called him the master a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, no, he did. He did very well. He did very well. He didn't always love to show. That's yeah. not his most favorite thing. But 
he always did what I asked him to do, and he did very well. He was a good dog. He yeah. was a good dog. And then after Bates would have been Opie. Mm-hmm. And Opie did uh, Opie is the ended up being the second top winning um, Westie as far as best in shows go in Canada behind what, JD. What did he end up with? And he ended up with fifty three. Oh, it's a good number. Yeah, he was he was number two terriers first year, and then top terrier second year, and both years ended up number three all breeds. And I always found it interesting the one year that he was number three, number one was um, Connie with her Carrie Blue Terrier. And to me, because Terriers are the smallest group, yeah, you know, Terriers and the Hounds are usually the smallest group, that two dogs in that group could end up so high in the standings. I always find that very interesting because, I mean, like I say, Terriers. Yeah. Right, you have to you have to win twice as much to try and keep up to oh, most of the other groups. Right, you know. So for the two of you to win that many best in shows, so yeah, I always I always found that really I always found that really interesting, and and last year as well with um, Ailey and their wire, you know, and then um, Atari doing so well, you know. Yeah, what's Atari at now? He he must be getting up there too for best in shows. He um, he just won two this past weekend again. Uh, he's up to eighteen, I believe. Wow! Yeah, eighteen. Yeah, he's an amazing dog. You and the Westies, you and those Westies. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't choose that breed. But I know, it's what I know. Oh my God! <laughs> so let's go back then. So as as an as a professional handler now. What other mentors have have influenced you up to this point? Oh, there's been so many. Like I, I, when I we were first seen them all, but I just some highlights. Right, but it's like when we were first contacted to show a beach on by Ann Yoakum years and years and years ago. I've never trimmed a beach on before. I thought, oh, what the hell do I do? But we knew Elaine Mitchell, and we flew Elaine out. Um, from Edmonton to here in BC and spent a whole weekend just grooming Bichons, bathing them, the right way to bathe them, the right way to dry them, you know, the right way to scissor them, to comb them, to do everything with them, you know, just so I could learn it. That's and our first and our first one, he up until recently the record was broken, but he held the record for the most best for a Bichon for oh my God, like probably 25 years. What was his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Wendar Fly the Flag. Pilot. Pilot. Pilot, yeah. 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 Another dog that I think he was ahead of his time. Yeah, he was a prominent dog for Over sure. here, yeah. Big open side gate, like huge open side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did really well. So so you're saying Elaine was, was one of your mentors then? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's just, you, you just with each new breed, you just, you go to who you think the best, right? And sure. Right? I mean, how many? I've watched you years and years and years trimming those Irish setters, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and you taught me how to iron. And I did teach you how to <laughs> iron. That's right. That's <laughs> decent ironing. There you go. <laughs> we, both had, we both had hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, if someone wanted to be a handler, right, a youngster came up to you, what advice would you give them to be a handler? What would, what would you be, how would you direct them or try to point them? Keep quiet, listen, watch. I thought you were talking um, to me for a second. Like, okay, I will. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's not, get an education because it's not an easy life. You know, it's not an easy life. Get an education, you know, in case you have to fall back on it. Um, you know, it's, it's a big responsibility too, oh, sure. you know, you gotta, and, and the winning is minimal. I mean, like it's, it's you gotta know how to look after the dogs, you gotta, you know, you gotta make sure your vehicle's in good shape. You, there's so many things other than the two minutes you spend in the ring. Yeah. You know, I mean, the and winning is, yeah. and, you know, and, and, and I, a lot of people say, oh, you know, they're a handler, their job is to win. That's not the job. No, that's not the job. That's, you know, you can't control the point of the finger. It's the job is to do the best 
job you can with that dog that day. Yeah. You know, that's the job to look after it, to make sure it's cared for and that you can present it to the best of your ability. That's to me, that's the job. For sure. It's not winning. It's not winning. Is Patricia still there? He's wandering back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was curious about her answer, but I'd probably be the same. Um, yeah, it would be. A, yeah, I would think it would be. I was just curious. So again, what about judging? I mean, do you have that in, in your in your sights at all? I know you I like love judging. <laughs> huh? I know you like judging. Oh, I do. Yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Um, Oh, let's just that quick. Um, you look scared there for a second. I've done it. I've done a number of, of sweeps assignments. Um, I um, the first sweeps assignment I ever did for the Canadian was for the Canadian National Club years ago, and Luke Eric used to show for a number of people, but Harry, in particular, Harriet Sherman, sadly yeah. just passed away. Um, I didn't know that. And. Um, we were always competitors, um, and I used to always tease him that you know I would spend hours getting my dog ready, and he would he'd be busy with cheat suits, so he'd do like the, the thirty second Westie and go in and beat me. <laughs> I think we all called it the three minute Westie back then. Um, <laughs> and so the so when I went to do the sweeps at this the, my first sweeps assignment at the national and uh, uh, terrier breeders when it used to be in the old Don Mills Arena. And uh, in walks Luke. And I think he could tell by the, the look on my face that I was not really liking what was coming in the rain. <laughs> and he just walked in, he plumped his dog on the table, and he said, I'll bet you've never been so glad to see me in your life. <laughs> and he did end up winning. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, no, I've uh, I've done sweeps for the uh, the American National Club at Montgomery, um, which was a great assignment. Um, I, yeah, I do. I I love judging. Am I going to be a judge? I don't. I don't know. I don't know because I mean, I think you have to take. You can't do this, right? So it's although now that I have a job at the hospital, <laughs> my COVID job. <laughs> and you still breed Westies. You can show your own Westies. Well, I don't actually. I don't actually. I don't actually breed them. Are you not breeding anymore? No, no. I mean, I would like to. Yeah, I would like to. If I could find a nice bitch. And... Yeah, I would like to. But so, well, it's not currently. It's just we're always gone, right? Right. Oh, for sure. But so, but, uh, but you're open then to being a judge at some point. Then. Oh but yeah, absolutely. I think, I think uh, you know. We need you, so the sport needs you, likes of you, to be out there judging. So. Well, I'm. I found out recently that my name was put on the ballot for Montgomery for 2025, which you know it has to go to a vote, but still, just to be on the ballot. Oh, well, that's an honor, yeah, and I hope huge you honor, yeah. You yeah. There's nobody more deserving than you. Well, I, I don't know about that, but <laughs> well, you're always downplaying yourself. <laughs> I think you deserve it. <laughs> well, thank you. You've always been. <laughs> it, it, it's. I mean, I've always thought that because you, you're a great Westie guy, obviously. But I think you could do that with any breed you wanted to, if you really, if you really wanted to. I think you have that in you. So, because every time you take a different breed, be it Bichon, be it Carey, you always excel. So I am. I even see you excel in my breed. <laughs> so. Well, I'll never forget. <laughs> Oh, I'll never forget the year we were campaigning an Irish setter, and he was 11 years old. <laughs> Who campaigns an 11 year old Irish setter? Anyways, he was he was number one Irish setter all year long, and we went into the owner said, "Well, should he go to Credit Valley?" And I said, "Well, he's number one Irish setter." I said, "You know," I said, Maybe Will could catch him if he won best in show all three days at Credit Valley. I said, but I don't think that's going to happen. And it did. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Irish Center. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I, that really, well. I really liked him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was a fun dog. Yeah, yeah. He was a fun dog. So We've had lots of fun dogs. 
Yeah, yeah. We've had lots of fun times too. Right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, okay, one last question for you then. <laughs> Dude, your eyes just got bigger for a second. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you could meet the 20 year old David, is there any advice you'd give him now? Oh, yes. Keep your mouth shut and listen. <laughs> yeah. It's true, but it's amazing how many people <laughs> answer that. That's their answer. <laughs> you know, it takes us that long to figure out. Oh, I should have shut up. <laughs> yeah, because there's so many. There's so many wiser people out there. Yeah, you know. And, and, but uh, like I said before, the, I was so glad I grew up in dogs when I did. You know, and around the people that I did. Because yeah. <laughs> I know it's a scary thing to say, but I, I think we grew up in probably the most influential time in, in the sport. I hate to say, I, I know that some everybody probably thinks that, but you think about all the players that we grew up watching. It's, right. Yeah. It's, it yeah. really is amazing. I, I remember as a, as a little kid when we were first in dogs going to, it was Ravenna Kennel Club in the States. And I didn't know who she was at the time, but I was fascinated by this big gray dog that she had, Pat Craig, Pat Trotter, yeah. um, and was Vin Melka's Vagabond. And I was at Ravenna, and I followed her around all day long. I would not leave, because I was just fascinated by this dog. Oh, for sure. And I, I didn't know who she was, but I learned. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how dogs like that grab us. It's yeah. it, It's happened over the years. And yeah. And it's, and it's not just the breed; it's the dog. It's the individual dog. You, you, yeah. It's almost like you can tell that they know they're better than the rest, and it it comes out. Yeah. So you get to see it. So. Yeah, I had I had um, I had one small journey into smooth fox terriers when I was young, and got a, a bitch from um, Mrs. Farrell, who oh, Bob yeah. and Jane showed for. Yeah. And Bob and Jane were always so nice to me when I took her down to be bred and had puppies, and you know they were they were so nice to me. Um, but it was yeah, it's just been met a lot of great people. I remember Jane showing Legend of Gale, you know, <laughs> dogs that you'll never forget, oh, for you sure. know, for sure. and the Holly Hills Desert when the Afghan, like just amazing dog. Yeah, I have, I have photographs of Jane. I think probably before I even knew who she was. And it was pictures of her and George in the ring showing our setters against each other. And it's, it's, it's amazing to look back now. When I mean, you look at their in the ring, it's not just those two. There's Tommy Glass and just Bobby Barlow. There's they're, they're all in there. And that was the bloody breed. <laughs> uh, Bobby Barlow with Slippery Hill Hudson, the Basset Hound. Like that oh. was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember um, who I uh, also used to watch a lot was... Um, David Hiltz with the uh, Starbucks Hang 'em High. Hang 'em High, yeah. Right? Amazing dogs. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's incredible. It really is. Yeah. <sighs> I'll thank you, David. I'll let you get back to your work, whatever you're doing today. Or what Patricia back to the ho did. Back to the hospital. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not back to sitting on the in the back and tanning or anything like that. Well, I'll do that before. <laughs> <laughs> You know that. I do. <laughs> well, it was great catching up. I guess I'll see you in a few weeks. And uh, You will. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> see, David? Painless, like I told you. Well, thanks for that interview. If you like what you see here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget, if you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me at dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or if you want to find out what's happening in Will's world, go to willalexander.net. And don't forget about the dog show drive every Thursday with Wayne Kavanaugh and myself. Take care, guys. Till next time.